What's up? This is Link to the Past, Beard Bros style. We did Super Metroid on the show. Right. I Guys, welcome back to Link to the Past. <laughs> uh, who'd have thought that we were going to be playing this game again? This is Super Metroid Randomized! Yeah, boy! We're Let's Players and Influencers. <laughs> welcome, guys, to yet another Super Metroid playthrough. Just a regular playthrough of Super Metroid. Oh, yeah, just a regular. No we big thought, deal. You know what? You guys have already seen us play this game three times. Let's, let's, do, let's do, it do it again. again. Oh. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Guys, welcome what? to the Super Metroid Cross Link to the Past Randomizer. Welcome gamers to Super Beard Bowl Season 2. Each month, we're doing an all new eight episode series complete with a beginning and an end as voted on by you, our loyal viewers. Without paying a single penny, everyone who watches will be able to vote on one of four show ideas. And once you narrow it down from four to two, the Beard Bowl Patreon tier will then choose between the top two for which show gets made into a full eight episode series. This month, the winning series is Beard Bros Movie Reviews. Brett, Gerard, and Alex watch and review movies that you guys thought they might enjoy. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So until then, just sit back, relax, and enjoy another incredible episode of Super Beard Bowl. Hey everyone, welcome back to what will be our finale of season two. Eight of up, the eight down, baby. Movie reviews with the Beard Bros. We got Gerard, Brett, and Alex, and we're here today to talk about Surf ninjas kwan su dude a movie Kwan-Zu, that dude. i watched in Kwan-Zu, low resolution dude. on youtube because the only other yes. option was a vhs there is tape no way to watch this film other than it is bootlegly uploaded to youtube so, so i have a question i'm gonna be honest i i searched for it in google first to watch yep. this movie mm-hmm. and the first thing that too. came up was the full movie on youtube so i mm-hmm. stopped looking so but you're mm-hmm. telling me that if i had tried to look for it on like you know I amazon i legitimately <laughs> wanted to go through a appropriate route because i don't believe in piracy and i had no choice but to use YouTube. Yeah, I literally uh, so many times because it was so low res was like, is that really Leslie yeah. Nielsen? Is that mm-hmm. actually Rob Schneider? Like I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I had never seen this movie before. It blew me the fuck away. I had oh, no oh, idea. Yeah, that's something that I, yeah, we should totally establish that. I've seen this movie probably three times growing up. You've never seen this movie before now, Alex? I had no idea. I knew that it existed, but I, I'd, I'd seen the Three Ninjas movies. I'd that seen makes the a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, Gerard, have you, do you know this movie? So, I watched this movie once when it came out when I was a kid, and I've seen Three Ninjas so many times that I thought Surf Ninjas and Three Ninjas were the exact same film. Turns out they are nowhere no. near the same film. No, they are guys, not. Three, you guys thought this was like, well, Gerard, you thought this was going to be three ninjas? I, I just, I remember a lot of the bit, like when we were talking about like the, the movie choices, I kept going, Rocky loves Emily. And I realized half with the movie, I was like, that's nah, not that's, the right that's film. That's three Stop ninjas, bro. Movie. I am, I am, I am lost. I am so lost you've seen in my the movie once. Film. I've seen the movie three times. I, I thought for sure there was no way I'd be the person out of all of us who has seen the movie the most. Let's I did not be honest, though. If there's martial arts in the movie, there's like a 40% higher chance that you've seen it than either of us. Is that That's real? That's true. I, look, I have, a, I, have a, I have a history of loving and watching martial arts movies, but whenever right. I talk mm-hmm. to you about them, you always like seem to have more knowledge than me. I like it's kicking true. people. What can I say? I get it. And that, and, you know, honestly, that part of this movie, other than the fact that nobody gets hurt and there's no blood and like no stakes in any of the action, like the uh, martial art <laughs> moves themselves are actually pretty sick. You know, and that's, uh, I didn't look it up, but let's be honest here. It's probably the case. That's probably uh, thanks in part to uh, Ernie Reyes, probably senior and junior, who are like the stunt coordinators and choreographers for a lot of films and probably this one too. But in addition to that, 
Surf Ninjas features uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. as the main character, and Ernie Reyes Sr., his father, plays another character in this film. Zatch. Uh, and the premise is that... Zatch, yeah. This is from 1993, and the premise is that uh, there's a couple of, like, be- there's two Beach Bum brothers. I would love to know one- your description of this premise, because this... I- oh, okay, it's yeah, It's very easy. It's like two Beach Bum brothers and their one other geeky Beach Bum friend uh, mm-hmm. are one day attacked out of nowhere by, like, four ninjas, because it turns out that the two brothers are, like... A uh, lost princes from like a fictional island Asian nation. It's and China they, and, and they Japan mixed have, with Thailand. Yeah, it's very Thailandy. Yeah, and they have to like go back to their island nation now, and because like it's the older brother's fifteenth birthday, he's come of age, so they have to go back and and like rescue, like liberate their land from an evil warlord. That's the fucking movie. Except also, except also, there's a Game Gear in the mix. Yeah, there are. And, yeah, yeah. And it's, also, it's, it's, it's a predictive game gear. To be clear, it's a it's like a magic game gear, and and then also maybe Rob Schneider actually has powers. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Every uh, time Rob Schneider says, "What if this happened?" or "What if this didn't happen?" it did or did not happen. Yeah, but but I I, I just want to get it out of the way first, since we're already talking about it a little bit. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. This movie was made in 1993. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. was born in 1973. So he was Mm -hmm. 20. So he was 20, which you can tell because he's like super built for a high schooler. He's like jacked as fuck. His elbows look like blades. Let's be honest. Not only is he 20, he's a 20 year old who for years already had been working as a stunt person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't he one of the Ninja Turtles? Yes. Yeah. He he plays, he's the stunt double for Donatello in the first. Ninja Turtles movie, yeah. then he's in the second movie as Kino. Yeah. Right. Uh, everybody and- everybody who grew up with Ninja Turtles 2 knows this motherfucker. In fact, right. mm-hmm. it is not a mistake that they cast this motherfucker. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Uh, but the other thing is that Rob Schneider, uh, who I... We'll talk about in in world in a second, but he is uh-huh. thirty years old. He was born in nineteen sixty three. So You're at this, kidding me? You're no, kidding me? No, he is thirty in this wow. film. Hey, he does a good job. He doesn't good no. job. He doesn't listen. He doesn't do a good job of playing a convincing sixteen year old, but he does do a good job of playing a convincing twenty year old playing a sixteen year old. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess I feel like most of the work was his like bright orange fucking shitty ass haircut uh, and And just long ass shirts, long ass T-shirts. He was like the perfect like white guy who sucks like to be in this movie. Like he delivers every joke terribly. He's just the right amount racist uh, like from time to time. Like, he is pretty racist in the movie. That's yeah, I mean, right. the movie I, in general, like, as a concept, the movie is racist. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, the Kendo guy, uh, this is a Chinatown, but it's a uh, little Patusan. Like, right. you know, they're right. like, um, literally at one point, or, there's a line, I forget what it is, but I think I think Johnny says it. I think his name is Johnny, Ernie, Ernie, Ernie Jr. Yeah. He says something like, but you're not Asian. <laughs> I realized, like, if you were talking about somebody from Patusan, you wouldn't be like, you're not Asian. Ah, uh, but he doesn't know that he's Patusani at that point. I thought it was, he was saying, you, you're the prince of this nation. And, and he's like, I am. And he's like, no, you're not Asian, which I thought was just him sort of just admitting that Patusan was just like a mix of just like Asian. I mean, like, you're kind of right. Like they could have written that line a little bit better, but like I'll forgive J- the character of Johnny for saying that because it's not like he grew up knowing he was Patusani. No, it's so. just it's it's just the script being like, yeah, it's just generic Asian, bro. Like I don't you're know. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll half agree with that. You're right. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. I, how old is Iggy supposed to be? Sixteen? Prop around Johnny's age, probably. He, God he, damn. He, he's turning. Oh, you mean oh Iggy? Yeah. Yeah. I imagine that he's probably a little bit older. Why the like fuck 18, did they? 18, 19. Why the fuck did they cast him in this? Number one, but even comedic, more comedic value. I guess they could have, but they could have. Like, wasn't like Corey Feldman alive? Like, didn't people exist drugs, who were young? Drugs, drugs. Oh, he was already on drugs. Yeah, drugs. Well, somebody plus, there had to be a Corey teen at that, that time. Probably looked older than fucking Rob Schneider. There had to be one teenager somewhere who could have come and done this besides thirty-year-old Rob Schneider. <laughs> Not with the atomic clock timing of Rob Schneider. No way, bro. Like, what year is fucking Waterboy from? Uh, 80, 98, 98. So, 
yeah, that's like, like that's, that's five years five later. Years like, what, later. Are you, what are we talking? He's like, get him, cut his fucking yeah. head off. He looks like an old man in that. Uh, but that aside, the <laughs> weirdest, the weirdest choice by far in this movie, like by one hundo fasundo far, is casting Leslie Nielsen as like a right. macho, muscular Power right. Ranger villain, basically. Right. I it, I just want to point out this is a Leslie Nielsen. Like the white comedian of the eighties of like of like weird whiter than most films, because of right? his hair, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone knows who he is, and then he's in this movie for some reason, and he has half of a face for some reason, and he has the fewest lines out of everyone in this film. We spend no time with him at all to understand any of his motivations or point as the villain. And it He's got a phone was, bit. The the phone bit was his his calling. That's his whole. Was that's every, the whole part. Is the phone bit? Yeah. Every that was that was an accident. I didn't mean that. You, every time every time someone calls him, he's he's just like, "Hey, I leave a message, but don't hang up." And like, there's it happens twice where he's like, "Hello," and like the person hung hung up, and he gets mad, and he like beats up the phone, and it's like. That's why? the bit. Why was why was this the bit? This is the bit that we needed look, him to look. This movie's highly comical. Like, like this movie is just as much comedy as it is action. You know what I mean? So sort of. I guess their thinking was that like, you know, let's get like a big name for the villain. And he, you're right, he doesn't do much because he's not supposed to. Like, I'm not it's saying just, this thing is a fucking masterpiece. No, but it's like, just it, such a fucking weird call. It's weird. It's a weird call. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is a very strange casting choice, but I think they leaned into it. You know what I mean? Like they didn't do it and be like, uh, like pretty normal, right? Like I think they did it and they were like, yeah, we know. They, it's made, they made it work. They made it work. Like he they, ch- they, he, they just they, did what they could. They just didn't like make it. Like there, it wasn't even that comedic of a role compared to like pretty much anyone else in the film, which was yeah. like so weird to me. Uh, but I think it's 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 weird. It's weird to say the following sentence. Okay. Rob Schneider was funnier than Leslie Nielsen in this movie. I totally agree. It's and true. It's I think weird. Rob Schneider did a good job, guys. He did a very good job. He did the best that he could as a 30-year-old man pretending to be a teenager. Like he was not like checked out in this movie, but I don't I didn't like buy him as a child. No, you know neither did I. Yeah. But like his timing was on point, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, he, he has like some jokes where he makes fun of the eye patch guy. He has some jokes where mm-hmm. he, you know, I don't know. It's there's a lot of zingers in this movie all around. The bit, actually, the bit where he thinks he's the king or the prince and he's always bringing it up, right. and then like even even the moment when he realizes, oh yeah, I'm not the prince, even though everyone keeps telling him he isn't. The guy's like, just give him a headband. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is probably one of the more human moments in the movie. Yeah, uh, I wish the movie had more human moments, but I understand when you're trying to fit in all the martial arts action and you're trying to fit in all that comedy, like making people care about your characters kind of takes a back seat. I guess what I'm saying is I understand why they chose to do what they did, but it's not like this film completely ignored those things. I think when it attempted to handle those elements, though, it was just a little bit sloppy. And I do mean a little bit like, for example, it's very clear that a theme early on was like. You guys, you two, my two kids, and probably Iggy the friend too, by extension, y'all kids don't take responsibility. Y'all need to take responsibility. And I'm like, okay, uh, maybe that's the lesson that they'll learn by the end of the film. Uh, And then they even kind of have the perfect avenue for that, which is like, you guys need to take responsibility. You guys need to be princes, right? And I'm like, you guys need to lead a revolution. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I think the problem is that like the refusal of like early on, the two brothers are like, hell no, we don't want to lead a revolution, which I think is a good choice. I don't think it comes from the best place. I think it comes from the place of like, well, it should come from the place as, as like, dude, we, all we are are surfers. We just want to like bum around and have fun. But instead it comes from the place of like, who the fuck are you? Our dad is gone. Yeah, Where are like, the cops? Which yeah. is so understandable, right? Well, the cops like, were guess, just chilling a bit, like, apparently. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I guess my point is that, like, if you want to establish that your characters, if you want to have a, a story about 
kids learning to finally accept a little bit of responsibility uh, make them have to m- make that choice to abandon uh, the lack of responsibility as opposed to being literally thrust into action due to like literally like basically having no other choice. They should have had a choice to make about mm. uh, whether or not to follow Zatch and then they finally do it. Um, but yeah, you know, like I, you know, what? I think the father should have never been kidnapped. I think that was a bit too much because, of course, they're probably going to like go get their father. If they hadn't, that would have been like, holy shit, they're such beach bums. They're not going to go get their dad. But imagine if he would imagine if Zatch approached them and was like, here's the deal. Y'all are princes. You got to come back. And then they deli- like and they have to think about, like, do we want to just stay here and be beach bums? Do we want to go do the princely thing? I think that would have been kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I think the 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 one of the issues I had this movie was um, the introduction of the other characters aside from our main cast of people. <laughs> Don't tell um, me you're gonna hate on Tone Loke. Don't do that. No, I love him. I, right. lo- I love him as an actor. I love him as a performer. Uh, I they kind of reverse engineer him to be in this movie. Like it feels like he showed up to do his bit in L.A. and they were like, you know, you're so good. Let's just keep you in this movie. That feels super real. He wakes up yeah. from a nap where he got like knocked out and he's like, I just feel like taking, I just feel like being on your team. He's like, I, I haven't been on vacation in, in, in 14, in 18 months. I'm, I'm going to join you guys. That's super like, right. real. This yeah. had to be like the same year that he did uh, Mr. McIntosh, right? Yeah. It's like uh, the Richie, exact Richie same. Rich? Not Richie Rich. Uh, the uh, other one. Blank check. Yeah. 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 Blank yeah, yeah. check. Blank check. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, very 90s. Yeah, I, also, also the um, the the bride to be, yeah, Kelly who, was, right? Kelly who who is actually one of my favorite characters in this movie. She's very, um, I like her her character development and and how she's just like, actually, I don't want to be a, a married at fifteen to you. I see you. Like, I see I, you. Like, it I, felt a little bit really, like Tone Loke coming out of the thing and being like, I'm different. I'm a different character now agree. that I went. Yeah. See, I agree with both yeah. of you. I agree with yeah. Gerard that like I like that she had a little mini arc of like, I am a child princess bride <laughs> betrothed to you fucking like Amani Aze from Coming to America. <laughs> right. And yeah. then but I uh and then eventually she gets to like, you know what? I've been thinking and like I need to do that. I can like have a job. I can have my own life. But yeah. I also agree with Alex that that was like it came out at, like there was nothing to prompt that. She like uh, kissed him. She like problem. did all the stuff. She didn't. We can still date, right? It's like that what? was the weirdest part. She yeah. was like, he was like, do you want to go to the mall? And she was like, fuck no, we're getting married, bro. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. like later she's like, that was, that was that was his way of being like, I like you. Can I buy you a smoothie? Like that was like what he was trying to do. And she was like, we're getting married, dude. We're skipping. And then all later that. she's like, you can buy me a smoothie, but we're definitely not getting married, no matter what. Yeah. Uh, something else that I think could have been done a slight, like a little bit better, was the um, setting up how important these powers were to these two brothers. So uh, you guys were talking about it before. The younger brother Adam, his power is like precognition because By he can uh, see, Game Gear. Yeah, he, on his Game Gear system, he can see like slightly into the future, which is a fun idea, and he can like do like watch out, a dude's up there, you know. And the older brother just straight up has, like, the power of martial arts. Like, like his body takes over for him and he starts beating ass. And mm-hmm. shout outs to Ernie Reyes Jr. for doing a really good job of, like, almost Buster Keaton-ish, like, my bot, like, what's going on? You know what I mean? The man is uh, so fucking good at tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they, they do a great job. I think what could have been a little bit better is if they established, once again, in the normal early on, that that is definitely not who these characters are. For example, mm-hmm. if Johnny was a bit of uh, a nerd, a loser in school, and literally got beat up every other day because he can't defend himself, like he does, he's not a fighter. So that when he becomes a fighter, it's a big deal to him. And if Adam, like this is the one I kind of have, like, like, well, how do you, how do, you, how do you make it a big deal that Adam can now see the future? And I'm like, maybe he's just kind of like not smart. You know what I no, mean? No, they they covered it. He was like, what happened to Shinobi? I mean, I'm yeah, kidding, I'm just yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm like, what, what if Adam at the top of the movie was like, you know, his grades weren't great, and they kind of established it with like, like he's failing at geography and shit. But like, I don't know, what if they had a moment where like he gets his report card and like his brother's like, don't worry about it, dude, you'll be okay. And he, what if he's worried about like not being the smartest? 
right? Which is kind of hard to do when you're in the same movie, you have Rob Schneider. But uh, that'd have been cool if he thinks of himself as like, I'm not that bright, but at least I'm good at surfing. Mm-hmm. I and thought they were the going to give him his moment. Uh, and then in the movie, like he learns, like, oh shit, I am smart. I can see what's happening. You know what I mean? Can I? I maybe this is a nitpick, and I'm not trying to like damper on on uh, anyone's parade on this one. Is it me, or was there barely any surfing in this movie? Like yeah. I thought. <laughs> yeah. I remember it being so much more surfing based, and when we only or at the end of the day. There were three surfing scenes. Two were in the beginning. One was the opening credits. And uh, the third one is like... Ten minutes from the end of the movie, yeah. Yeah, when the the boy realizes that they have the never-ending resource of the forest and can just build surfboards in the matter of minutes. That's like an incredible uh, effect shot, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sound of sawing. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You're right. Uh, There isn't much surfing in this film. Uh, I thought they, I thought they were going to give Adam his moment though at the end, and they just like mm-hmm. didn't. It was so weird. He well, was like, "Do you know?" Mm-hmm. He was standing there on the podium next to the to his brother, the king. And I thought what was going to happen was he was like, "I don't know what to fucking say. I got nothing." And of course, at first, I thought they were going to do Baba Ram too, which I definitely got eventually. Right, uh, but <laughs> which hilarious bit. But uh, that was a good bit. Then, that was a pretty good bit. But then. He steps forward and he's like, I got this, bro. Hold on. And he like walks out and he just does his little, uh, what is it? Woo shy dudes or whatever yeah. they say. <laughs> yeah. He just says it and then he stops and then like looks back at his brother. And I thought that I thought that he was going to be the one who was going to be like, here's how we're going to solve the situation. I'm going to give exactly. It, I'm going to give everybody what they want because I'm now smart and I figured it out. Right. But really, right. really the only payoff that the kid gets Adam is that at the beginning of the movie like in like the first five minutes he's like I want to drive and then he gets to drive like later that's like his mm-hmm. basically his arc and yep. he's like good at driving too yeah he's like I, really good at driving I think you're hitting on something that is like one of the my opinion the fundamental problems with the movie is that the movie starts off by telling us here's who you kids are which in essence tells us the audience here's where you're going to end up here's what your journey is going to be but it doesn't mm-hmm. end that way for example the movie begins with like y'all don't take responsibility but the movie literally ends like that like like spoiler alert everybody the good guys win and these brothers are given monarchy over this small nation of patusan and the first thing older brother johnny does when he becomes leader is like first off i'm gonna dissolve the monarchy and establish democracy and i'm like wait wait, wait. like so you're giving up the responsibility again like what did you learn then Like, I was with you. I'm like, okay, so, like, they're going to use the brother's smarts to, like, be, like, the real, like, king. And, like, Mm -hmm. and then, like, Johnny's going to be the new Zatch by being, like, the head of the, the, you know, the the, the royal guard. But, no, they just go back to being beach bums again. So nothing was learned. They're surfing just, bro. That that was the issue I had, too. I think think what, what punctuated this point was that none of them speak English. So, like, he just was like... I'm going to dissolve the monarchy and you're all going to have the government. And it cuts back and everyone's just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he just kept going and pe- once thing people were just like, yeah. And it's, it's like, <laughs> I think you're right, Brett. There's, it's, it's a combination of not necessarily getting it's, you know, what it established in the beginning of the film on top of like, it's not like we've ever seen, the main characters go, man, doesn't democracy great the whole time? Right, like, right. There was no, there was no necessary payoff for the reason of, of dissolving the monarchy. It would have made more sense if it was a part of the character arc, but it just wasn't. It just felt like, yeah, you all get your cakes and eat it too, everyone. Yeah, it would have made the, much he, more sense, like theme wise, for them to remain mm-hmm. the the kings, the the princes. Mm-hmm. Like or at you least go from or at least start a business kings. or something in your in your. You know, like take over your dad's shop or something, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't know. That being said, <clears throat> I think it's super cool that Ernie Reyes and his son got to do a full on movie together. Like, imagine making a movie with your dad that millions of people see, probably. No. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's probably pretty cool, you know? Mm hmm. I love the scene where Ernie Reyes Sr. jumps on that dude's face and then, like, takes that other dude and then, like, lands and they're both on the ground and he's standing up. Such a sick trick. <laughs> Such a sick trick. <laughs> Such a sick. Uh, si- 
I think the last thing I want to bring up is a question to you guys, because this is how I felt while watching the film, but I don't know if it's right. <clears throat> Can you guys think of a film that is more quintessential 90s kids movie than this? Oh, I was going to say, like, a lot of the stuff that really, like, was kind of not good about this movie kind of gets forgiven for that exact reason is that this movie feels like Power Rangers the movie, but I feel like Power Rangers the movie might be the one. Mm. Power Rangers the movie, I feel like, is not as quintessential kids movie. Because you're missing the kids. Considering how big budget it was and, and like, all the special effects... Uh, not to mention, yeah, those were like definitely. Well, these are teenagers too. You know what? The presence well, of Adam sp- in this film yeah. saves it a lot. Like as far That's as true. being a kids movie, you know what I mean? That's true. Like the fact that it has a Game Gear in it, which yeah. by the way is a brand deal. Uh, and there is a Surf Ninjas video game that's real. I, yeah, I read about that. Yeah, but like um, is it a Game Gear game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think. It, I think. Yeah, I think it's. I think this is. It has like if you were gonna write like a paper on what is in a '90s kids movie, this is like mm-hmm. everything is in it. Like, that's my point. It has, like, martial arts. It has, like, California beach bum culture in it. Like, skateboard culture adjacent. It's got Rob Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's got tons of, like, zany fucking slapstick comedy and shit. Like, is there a movie that's more quintessential 90s kids movie than this? Kids movie? I don't know. I I, the, I, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head that is, like, surf ninjas but more. Like Dude, I think the best uh, runner up, like runner up, but the, the the best next challenger is Three Ninjas. But I think the reason Surf Ninjas takes it over Three Ninjas is the presence of surfing. Like Surf Ninjas has everything Three Ninjas has. Like it even has fucking like bumbling uh, bad guys trying to break into a kids' houses and getting bopped. It even has that. But the thing that Surf Ninjas has over Three Ninjas is fucking surfing. It's also in there. Dudes, I didn't know this, but I looked into it. Uh, not only is it a brand deal that the Game Gears used in this film, in conjunction with Sega, they did develop a Surf Ninjas um, game, obviously, but the big kicker was that Sega partially co financed this film. This film oh. is partially financed by Sega. That <laughs> makes sense. That's I mean crazy that's to me. insane. I mean, uh, what year did uh, what year did the Wiz come out? Uh, seventy. Ooh, that's a good question. Seventy eight. No, no, not no, that Wiz. No, not, no, not, not that. Not wizard. the Diana Ross one. The Fred the Savage. Wizard? The Wizard. Uh, is that called the Wizard? It's the Wizard. Yeah. Nineteen eighty nine. What's 1989. that movie? The one? No, the one with the kids who play video games. <laughs> Nineteen eighty nine is when it came out. It was right when right before Mario three. Oh my god! This this whole film was supposed to be a. a a um, a gigantic promotion for uh, Mario Three. Yeah, I think you're right on, man. I think you're right on. Uh, I think I think this movie is, if not the best kids movie of the '90s, which I don't think it is. I think it's it is not. the. It's not. It is like if you needed Mm-mm. to. It's like a time capsule of the '90s. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Perfectly captured. Look, I, that's what I'm saying. I can't think of another movie that's more '90s kids movie than this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, final thoughts out of five. What do we got? Uh, I give it a two and a half out of five. <laughs> I, I I had fun, but it obviously had problems. I look forward to watching this movie again twenty years from now. Yeah, mm. yeah. Didn't have a lot of heart. But it really did take me back to the 90s. Like, that's the one thing missing from this movie is that it doesn't have, like, an emotional core like some movies did have. You know what I mean? Like, there it are tries, some. It tries, but it's very muddled. Yeah. Like, looking mm. at a goofy movie, right? That's a movie about a teenager oh. that's much more, like, personal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, you know, it's not the same type of movie, but I think, yeah, I'm going to give it two surfboards, two custom made Patusani wooden surfboards out of five. Kwansu, dudes. Kwansu dudes. Kwansu dudes. Thanks Thanks for for watching this season of Beard Bros Movie Reviews. We'll see you guys soon. See you next week with another show. Bye bye.
kill that man. No. Why not? You I can just take an elevator. Wackity sacks. Dude, used to be wackity sacks. Wackity sacks. Wackity sacks. Wackity sacks.